In the dealing room today, paintings by an international rock star. Since it's David Bowie, I think I'm going to better his offer. An extremely rare Mark I Rolls Royce. I could see myself in South Beach in that car. And some candlesticks that once belonged to a Hollywood legend. I would like to own them. 2,100 pounds. Five top international dealers with personal fortunes to spend. Sellers, anyone from anywhere in the world can bring their items to be assessed. We're here today to offer you this wonderful 200 million year old plus you saw skeleton. Wow. And I have here two uh, very special pieces of samurai history. Oh. You could shave with that. The dealers use their wealth of knowledge and expertise to unlock the fascinating history and value of these incredible treasures. These masks, which led Picasso to paint Les Demoiselles d'Avignon in 1906. The way the ink shines very evenly, you'll know that this is not something printed by hand, but it was printed by a machine. And if they like what they see, they'll fight to buy. £1,000 is a very good offer. £1,100 is an even better offer. £24,000. £30,000? £200,000. Oh, sorry, how much? You what? jumped in. I, I don't think you're a nice person. I really don't. These are the dealers. The dealers have no idea who they're about to meet or what they're bringing in to sell. With no opportunity to research the items, they rely on their years of experience as they make their bids. The first seller into the dealing room today is Steve from London, UK. Ladies and gentlemen, today I've brought with me a collection of completely rare and very unique David Bowie items acquired from the man himself. I became a big fan of David Bowie when I turned 14. You know, he's kind of pretty much the most important solo rock star that Britain has ever produced. When it comes to art and antiques, provenance is essential, and Miami antiques magnate Scott Diamond is keen to check Steve's credentials. Did you know David Bowie personally? Yes, I did. I edited and published his fan club magazine, and over the course of uh, three or four years, you know, gave me very uh, unique items as kind of thank you gifts, really. Can we have a look at these? Please. One of the world's most successful rock musicians, David Bowie, has sold a staggering 140 million albums over a 40-year career. But he's also a prolific artist. Often merging computer and hand-drawn images, he's produced over 5,000 pieces, which have been sold all over the world. Today, Steve has brought in a Bowie self-portrait, a personally designed Christmas card and two postcards of his work. Tell me, are these both uh, original artworks or...? Yes. He's taken two of his famous um, 70s canvases and he's kind of like manipulated them on his computer. These are very different styles, aren't they? Like his music, he's, he's very, very eclectic, very diverse. For London-based dealer Gillian Anderson Price, they're curiously appealing. The Bowie collection was something quite unexpected, not something I ever envisaged coming into the dealing room. Very strange collection, but quite lovely at the same time. Why would such a huge David Bowie fan want to part with them? Sadly, I'm emigrating to Australia, so I have to be very, very strict and pretty ruthless, I'm really, on what I can take. These aren't going to take up all that much space. No, that's true, but I feel like I want to, you know... Move on. Move on. Move on. Fresh start. Do you have a figure in mind? I would be looking at around 4,000 for the pair of postcards. For the canvas, offers in excess of 6,000. And for the Christmas card, I would say a thousand. Steve's flying high, but art and antiques dealer Richard Gauntlet is ready to shoot him down. Your valuation on the postcards is way out. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's a, a low-res printing of one of his paintings that he's doodled on. 
With the postcards not worth much, the dealers turn their attention to the Christmas card. And this time, it's not the price tag that's irritating Richard. I wouldn't even make you an offer on the Christmas card because I really don't think you should sell that. I didn't want to encourage him to actually sell that Christmas card. I'm sure if David Bowie was sitting here, he wouldn't like the idea. It's rather cashing in on an acquaintance, and I've never been a great fan of that. Steve received the specially designed Christmas card in 1994, and it's one of only 150 personally signed by David Bowie and his wife. Thank you. Richard may think it's in bad taste to sell something so intimate, but Gillian doesn't have such qualms. Well, Steve, <laughs> that is exactly the item that I like most. Richard was very firm that I shouldn't sell a Christmas card from someone. And actually, he's got a very good point. But Australia, come on, I need the money. I'd like to make you an offer. 300 pounds for it. Yes, OK, I will. Fantastic. Thank you. Cheers. For the remaining three dealers, the final piece of art is by far the most interesting. Number seven from Bowie's autobiographical D-Head series depicts his famous alter ego, Ziggy Stardust. But fine art specialist Jenny Pat is still in two minds. Well, I am a painting dealer, but he is not well known as a painter. He is well known for other of his talents. I have to say it is a good painting, but as a purely as a painting, it's not excellent. I like the brush strokes. I like the color. I like how free it is. Composition is nice. But still, there's something lacking. It's, it's a little bit amateur. The artwork might not be of the highest quality, but when it comes to deals, Steve's hoping the Bowie name makes all the difference. Steve. I'm willing to make you an offer on the D-head for 1,500 pounds. OK. I don't think I could accept that. Since it's David Bowie, I think I'm going to better his offer. I'm going to offer you 1,600. Any offers in excess of 1,600? I'll increase my bid to 1,750 pounds. I'll offer you 1,850 pounds. It's, not, it's nudging closer to my, to my minimum, yeah. As the prices climb, the tension builds. I've been doing business for 20 years. When you shake on a deal, the deal is done. But not everyone agrees with Scott. And the bidding war rages on. 200,000 pounds.
Sellers from around the world have the unique opportunity to meet five international dealers and have their treasured artefacts assessed. Steve, a former editor of David Bowie's fan club magazine, is keen to sell some of his hero's artwork. Gillian has already bought a personally designed Christmas card. Fantastic. Thank you. Cheers. Now Scott, Nick and Jenny are in a bidding war over a Bowie self-portrait. London pawnbroker and diamond dealer Nick Robinson has bid £1,850. All eyes are now on Jenny. Since it's David Bowie, I think I'm going to better his offer. I'm going to offer you 2000 Sounding, sounding pretty good. I'm going to sit down, but thank you very much. With Nick gone, it's down to Scott versus Jenny. Jenny uh, countered with, I will give you 2,000 pounds for the painting. And this was now bringing into the range where I thought we'll end up buying it. So now it was just tactics on how to complete the deal. Steve. I'm going to better the offer. I'm going to pay 2,100 pounds for it today. Your offer is 2,100. It's etching very, very close to my limit. 2,150 pounds. I will go to 2,200 pounds. Okay, I think I would say yes. Thank you. I'll take the offer. Okay. I haven't bettered my offer yet. Oh. I think that Scott knew that once he'd got a handshake, it's very difficult to take that back and start again. I've been doing business for 20 years. When you shake on a deal, the deal is done. There's no undoing the deal. There's no second thoughts on the deal. But not everyone agrees with him. I'm going to bet her offer by 50 pounds. 22.50. Okay. Uh, okay, you got a deal. Do you want to better my offer? I think I'll let Jenny have this one. <laughs> Thank you very much. That he then chose to reverse it because Jenny had offered 50 pounds more on a 2,200 pound bid. I would say doesn't show a lot of character. Thank you. Have a deal. Thank you very Thank you. much. Steve walks away with a handful of cash for two items of art he was given free of charge. I had to go back on my deal with Scott and, um, and take her offer. You know, it's every man for themselves out there. It's like a battle in a way. I think Scott was a bit miffed, actually, but uh, quite honestly, I don't care. I love the way that you pipped Scott the post for that painting, Jenny. I thought it was a fantastic skill just getting in there just, just at the right time. Well, if we were in an auction and if he were the auctioneer, he would have yelled, on the hammer, there's a new bit in the room. I waited. You do have the fastest hand in the room, though. <laughs> <laughs> Next into the dealing room is ex-care homeowner Richard, who now splits his time between the UK and Malta. The item I've got here today is very, very special, as there's only nine of these made. I hope the uh, dealers mean business, because I do. Now, these two items represent something else I brought in to show you, which is here. Oh, wow. The Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud Mark I was produced between 1955 and 59, with only nine right-hand drive convertibles like this one ever made. It's lovely, isn't it? I could see myself in South Beach in that car, cruising down South Ocean Boulevard. Vintage car expert Richard points out the little extras. But almost everything in this period was 
optional. So right. things like electric windows would have been, which this has got, which 1959 electric windows, that, that would have been a hideously, hideously expensive. expensive. Yeah. You see they have under here, you have a little table wow. with, with an ashtray in the table. Yeah. You can have your whiskey and your cigar <laughs> whilst driving, which is, <laughs> was a little more popular back in those days nice than way it is to today. Travel. The car is over 50 years old and was restored in the early 1990s at a cost of £300,000. So, when they restored the car, was it the top and bottom? Everything was totally gone through, engine, gearbox, everything. They should have no. given you a huge wadge of invoices. Yeah, but they went, the last owner, he kept all the history, unfortunately. So what sort of price do you have in mind? I want £380,000 for the car. I think you're asking a price for a perfectly restored, freshly restored, perfectly provenanced car. And one of the problems with this car is it's had a £300,000 restoration. It would come to about that thick in paperwork and invoices, which you would like to have with the car and would help it. Richard, I think it is a great car, and I know it's a, you know, I know it's a heroic thing. I think you are probably £100,000 over the top. So it's not for me, but thanks for bringing it in. Thank you. Three more dealers sit down. It's now down to Jenny to try and make a deal. The Rolls-Royce brand is very popular in Asia. The major buyers right now are in mainland China, and it's more popular than Bentley. I am going to make you an offer. Yes. 200,000 pounds. Well, that's half price. I'm sorry, it wouldn't be enough. I don't think I can make it any further. Thank you very much. OK. Thank you. I'm a little surprised. This is a rare, rare car. £380,000, I still think, is a bargain for somebody. Gorgeous car, love it. It's too much of an ask to ask a full retail price without full retail style paperwork. I know how difficult it is to sell something like that anywhere like the money that he's talking about. So that was kind of frustrating, but um, yeah, it's a shame he, he wanted too much. Anyone can bring anything into the dealing room and next is someone whose hobby is taking over his house. Hi, my name is Dave. I'm selling my 1963 Whirly Sir Lyrics jukebox today. My hobby is collecting jukeboxes. I've got five at the moment, and that's one of the reasons why I'm selling this. I need the space. I bought the jukebox for about £900 at the time. Um, I've re it and done bits and bobs and spent about another £300 on it. Dave, hi, I'm Richard. Part of what makes these things so wonderful and nostalgic and iconic is their sound. Could you play something for us? Yep, no problem at all. The first Wurlitzer jukeboxes were produced in the 1930s and soon they were heard on every corner during the big band and rock and roll era. Is the coin slot operational? Yes, this one's still got the original car in place. It's in great condition, but Jenny, Richard and Scott decide it's not for them. It's a truly evocative item. I think the sound, the look, you know, I was quite mesmerised by it. And I would like to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you £750. No, thank you. It's, it's worth a lot more than that. I, I paid more than that before I even restored it. Dave, I'm, I've got no 
romance about the 60s or 70s, but I think it's quite saleable. So I'll give you £900 for it. When Nick went in with his £900 offer, I could see that the seller was maybe wavering slightly. I have romance, Can and I... I do really like this. Yeah. But I do need to make a profit. I understand that, yeah. I will better Nick's offer of £900 with £1,100. That wouldn't even break even on the, the money I've spent on him. Dave, I'm not going to be interested because there's not a margin in it for me, so I'm going to sit down. Thank you. Thank you. What number would motivate you? I would sell it for 1250 1200 and I'll make sure it goes to somebody amazing. You got a deal. Marvellous, thank you. I knew it was worth around about the 15 mark, but I could tell she was really enthusiastic over it, so I thought, no, let it go to an, another row. Well, that was a good buy, Gillian. I'm quite excited about it. Yeah, I love the cool sound thing. it made, yeah. It's in great condition. And the right name. The right name, absolutely. Great idea. Next into the dealing room, some Japanese fine art. When I saw the next case, I was delighted. I thought it was beautiful, miniature, but it was very nicely carved. And the dealers hand out some home truths. OK, can I just say right now, I can't see them achieving anywhere near £10,000 in the next 100 years. It's not just sellers who travel from around the world to meet the dealers. Penny from Yorkshire, UK, has two intricate pieces which have come all the way from Japan. Hello, dealers. I brought two Netskis for you today to look at. One has two frogs on it, and the other has two mice. I think they're lovely. Netskis are the carved toggles that secure a money purse or tobacco pouch to the Japanese kimono belt. Popular until the late 1860s, Netskis were symbols of high status, prized for their remarkable rendering and tiny size. Netsuke is a very important type of art that is traded uh, among Japanese art dealers. Penny, you appear to me to really like these. Which begs the question of why do you want to dispose of them? Because I am downsizing now. They're literally. not very big. <laughs> <laughs> You're downsizing to live in a I small box. It. They might still fit. <laughs> I thought, when I look at the things I have, you can't keep everything. These miniature carvings are highly collectible, and Nick and Jenny soon get down to business. Are they signed? Yes. Yeah, I take um, a look. Please do. <laughs> Thank you. When I saw the next case, I was delighted. I thought it was beautiful, miniature, but it was very nicely carved. The great thing about them is that they are very intricate, very lifelike, and just a 
pleasure to look at. And these were made by the same artist. Ivory was a common material for Netsky carvings, and though international trade in ivory has been banned since 1990, certified antiques are excluded from the ruling. I, I do not believe that they are ivory. If they're not ivory, then they could be carved from bone or hardwood, but the overall value still lies in the skill of the craftsman. The carving is so intricate that nowadays they don't do anything like this anymore. I do believe these are around at least late 18th century. I love them. I can offer you a hundred pounds for both of them. That is low. Would you take 150 pounds? for the two. I would top that at 200 pounds. I will make you an offer, and it would be 285 pounds. The price is too high for Gillian, Richard, and Scott. I can only top his offer by a little. I can offer you 300 pounds. I'll go 325. Oh my gosh. Nick's bid is too high for Jenny, but is it good enough for the seller? We're very pleased to accept that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. I've made a deal! And it was a, a good one, a good one. I'm very happy with it. And I hope that the dealer is as happy as I am. I mean, I think the money was right. They are signed by the same artist, um, and they are saleable. And I think cute and the quality is good. But a good, real seller with the right price in her mind, pleasure to deal with, yes. quality items. And Nick still has a little room to make a profit. Exactly, exactly. The next item is so unusual that very few people even know what it is. My name's Jackie, and the item I'm bringing today to show the dealers is very rare. Not many people have got them, and I don't think many people have seen one before. Hello, dealers. I have brought my Coco de Mer seed for you to look at today. I bought this item in a box of lampshades for £13, and since finding out what it is, I'd really like to get around about £1,500. The Coco de Mer nut is the largest seed in the world and is so rare that it only grows on two of the Seychelles Islands. How did you come by this object? <laughs> I bought it by accident at an auction in France. <laughs> How yeah. do you buy something by accident at auction? Well, it was the first time I'd been to auction. I'm in a foreign country, I don't really speak the language, and I thought I'd finished bidding on a box of lighting, and I hadn't, and this was in the bottom of the box. Can we have a look? Absolutely. Until the Seychelles were discovered, the source of the giant seeds found floating in the sea was a complete mystery. Early sailors thought they might come from a tree growing beneath the ocean, hence their name Coco de Mer, from the French coconut of the sea. The Coco de Mer has a sort of mythology and a, an aura about it. They are very popular. There is a real market surrounding them. As their value lies solely in their looks, Jackie's Coco de Mer has been lacquered sometime in the past. The entire shape is, is very symmetrical, but then the varnish is not very uniform. There are some scratches and some dents actually around here, and then it's not very smooth in the bottom. It's not in good enough condition for Gillian, Jenny and Nick who sit down, but for Scott, it's love at first sight. Never seen a Coco de Mer before in my life. It's interesting looking and unique. Put it on a coffee table, it's a great conversation piece. Value-wise, since these are natural materials, I believe everyone is slightly different. So I don't think that could be an absolute pricing on it. I'd like to make an offer. I'll pay 400 pounds for it. Thank you, but I think I would decline. I would pay £450 for it today. Would £475 make a difference to you? I'll offer you £500 dead for it. 
I think I will probably decline that offer also.